In New Delhi, in the other the International Museum of Toilets, in Amsterdam, you can visit the Hash Marijuana and Hemp Museum, and in Zagreb, Croatia, there is a museum of broken relationships. Are there also such museums in Gdańsk and Gdynia? So not so famous, lesser known places, you know, but special ones, interesting and still worth a visit. Hi, Sebastian here talking to you from Poland, Europe. Today I'm going to show you 10 places, museums and exhibitions in Gdańsk and in Gdynia that you should consider visiting when you come there. The presented places are very different, so I'm sure everyone will find something for himself. The order of places presented is random. This is not a ranking. Get to know my proposals and choose something for yourself. Here we go. Close to the port of Gdynia, there is a playing card museum called Bridge Street. You can see there are thousands of delightful playing cards and also posters, postcards, paintings, labels, stamps, books, tableware and many other items with playing cards as they come on theme. Collected over 40 years, the selection is one of the most valuable in Europe due to its diversity. From the main corridor you can enter some rooms, each has a different character and focuses on a different theme. For example, in the Steinchik chamber you can learn about the history of playing cards in Poland and see coffee sets from Polish porcelain manufacturers. In the Card Players Workshop, you can admire antique card presses and one of the world's four remaining playing card dealing devices, dating from 1906. There is also a large part of the exhibition reserved only for adult card enthusiasts. Let's get back to the main part of the exhibition. The Gdynia Playing Card Museum is a rich, diverse and artistically attractive place. The colors, graphics and composition of the presented card sets are outstanding. You can spend easily up to two hours in this place admiring the art created around the theme of playing cards. The admission to the museum is 15 zlotys for adults and 13 zlotys for students and kids. The creator of the museum is Witold Jonszkowski. When he was 8 years old, he became interested in buying a neighbor's old motorcycle. He purchased it with his pocket money, repaired it, and that's how his adventure with collecting old cars and motorcycles began. Today, his unique collection comprises more than 150 motorbikes and over 50 cars. The most interesting of these are displayed in an exhibition hall the interior of which is styled as a cobblestone street from the 1920s. All of the vehicles are authentic, have original parts and are fully functional. The oldest exhibits come from 1925-26, so they are 100 years old. Each of the presented cars is described. The information plates include, among others, the year of production, technical data, vehicle history and some interesting facts. Among the exhibits there is the famous Buick made in 1931, the same one used by Al Capone, or the Nostin used by the English Queen. Among the motorbikes on display are machines from all over the world, including Holleys and Polish pre-war Falcons 1000. The Gdynia Motor Museum presents the evolution of automotive industry technology. There you can find out why a car's windscreen used to be split in two, see what the first locker trucks looked like and discover interesting facts of the first mass-produced cars. You can hire a car for filming there or for a wedding ceremony. The admission to the museum is 20 zlotys for adults and 15 zlotys for students and kids.
The Mini Museum of Modernism is located in the center of Gdynia, in a residential complex called Bankowiec, the Banka. The building was designed by Stanisław Żołowski and constructed in the 1930s. At the time, it was the largest apartment building in Gdynia and the most modern in Poland, with an aerated shelter, underground garage, elegant staircases and spacious apartments of up to 200 square meters, with specially designed rooms for servants. In the rooms of the former shelter, a kind of memorial chamber was created with the involvement and support of the community of residents of the building. Thanks to their commitment, it has turned into a unique museum of modernism. Everything is exposed in three rooms. They are commonly referred to as the kitchen, the living room and the bathroom, in connection with the objects and equipment collected there. In the kitchen, you can see an old traditional cupboard, a cold stove, a refrigerator and interesting ventilation grills. You can find many of the original furnishings and equipment of this residential building dating back to the pre-war times. The atmosphere of the living room makes you move back to pre-war times and feel the spirit of the Second Polish Republic. The curator of the museum is Ms. Maria Pirat of Link, a natural-born community activist and organizer. There is also a bathroom with interesting fittings and characteristic small terracotta tiles called, due to their form, corsets. They have become an unofficial symbol of pre-war modernist Gdynia. Admission to the Mini Museum of Modernism is free. All you need to do is to gather your friends, organize a group and arrange a date and time for the visit with Ms. Maria Piradov. All the contacts and the links to presented places I have included for you in the video description below. In the very center of Gdańsk, on Granary Island, in a historical tower, there is the Wax Museum, the Tower of Mysteries. The museum was opened in mid-2022, so it is a relatively new attraction in Gdańsk. The main part of the exhibition includes wax figures, but there is also an interactive exhibition pirate adventure, a 7D cinema and a haunted house. You start with wax figures made with basic hair. They represent famous politicians, musicians, actors, scientists, as well as heroes of fairy tales and films. You are allowed to take photos with all these heroes, but touching the figures is of course forbidden. In the Wax Museum, there are many references to Gdańsk. The information provided in the description is in a form of interesting facts. During the tour, you can stay next to life-size figures. There are, for example, the representations of the tallest and the smallest living men in the world. You can see there the world's largest breasts up close. After visiting this part of the museum, you pass through the pirate zone. A walkthrough is a great experience. Many elements and tools may surprise you, and it's already spooky. And for those who like to be scared and are over 12 years old, I absolutely recommend the top floor where the part called Haunted House is located. It will give you a thrill. By the way, in my opinion, the old 16th century brick tower is the best possible place to house such a museum. The admission to the museum is 49 slotis for adults and 39 slotis for students and kids. An additional fee of 10 zloty is required for the haunted house. The Old Toys Gallery is located in the very center of Gdańsk, just a few steps from St. Mary's Basilica. The place was created by a great enthusiast of old toys. Wojtek, the founder of the museum, 
has spent the last several years collecting old toys these extraordinary remnants of childhood. Today, the museum he runs with his wife comprises over 4,000 items. All the toys on display were made in Poland. They all date from 1920 to 1989. The vast majority of the exhibits, despite their age, are in excellent condition. There is a lot to see in the old toys gallery. There are treasures for boys and those for girls. You will find there table football games, self-assembly kits, trains, cars, dolls, pre-war dollhouses, sodas, teddy bears, toy soldiers, planes and also old game instructions and photographs. Adults also have a fantastic time in this museum. For parents and grandparents, it is a journey back in time to their childhood. A great idea is to visit this place together with your grandchildren or children. The Old Toys Gallery is a magical space that unlocks childhood memories and gives the opportunity to share it with your descendants. The admission to the museum costs only 12 slotties for adults and 10 for kids. Usually you visit it on your own, but the owner also organizes the special museum classes during which he shares interesting facts and secrets of his treasures. More details on the gallery website. The Amber Inclusion Museum is located in the building of the Faculty of Biology of the University of Gdańsk. It was created thanks to the scientists and amber craftsmen from Gdańsk as part of the educational activities. An attractive permanent exhibition entitled Life in the Amber Forest was created. It is devoted to amber, which is fossilized resin, and inclusions in amber. The main part of the exhibition is a diorama, the very first three-dimensional model of the amber forest in Poland on a one-to-one -one scale. The unique atmosphere of the place is based on the use of light, sound, and a special carpet imitating the softness of moors. It's a great way to learn about the beauty and history of amber. The exhibition presents amber and attractive amber inclusions. The amber on display comes from various parts of the world. We can admire plant and animal inclusions. Most of the exhibits are gifts from Gdańsk amber craftsmen who have been involved in the functioning and development of the museum for years. The museum opened in August 2013 is a compendium of knowledge about amber showing its origins, history, beauty and scientific values. Moreover, the Faculty of Biology is also worth a visit for other interesting exhibitions located in the public space of the building. There is a 16-meter-long original skeleton of a fin whale, the second longest creature on our planet. Right next to the entrance, there is an exhibition entitled Human Family Tree, where you can see eight casts of skulls and corresponding reconstructions of the faces of our ancestors over four million years. There is also an exhibition of original skeletons of some mammals. Upstairs, visitors can admire a huge tank containing 7,000 liters of water and 300 kilograms of rocks. This aquarium reflects the biotope of Africa's Lake Malawi. The aquarium is home to nearly 400 fish representing 15 species of endemic cichlids. Finally, the exhibition The Innocent Killers, presenting predators that must kill to survive. At this point, I would like to sincerely recommend the free application of the Faculty of Biology of the University of Gdańsk. After installing the app, you can get to know all the exhibitions offered and learn more about them by reading or listening in English or in Polish. A very useful tool. The admission to the museum is free. In the center of Gdańsk, opposite the Church of St. Barbara, there is the Museum of Illusions, called Déjà Vu. When visiting this place, you enter the intriguing world of optical illusions and digital art. 
The Museum of Illusions offers many visual effects, interactive activities and educational entertainment. So the whole thing is designed to surprise, entertain and educate. Thanks to the variety of attractions, it is a place where anyone can have fun regardless of age. The museum can be explored individually, walking freely and stopping at numerous points, entering different rooms. All effects are described in an accessible manner to explain and to make understand the phenomenon taking place. There is also helpful staff on site ready to provide additional explanations and guidance if necessary. The Museum of Illusions is a pleasant place where you can enjoy yourself in an original way with family or friends. The admission to the museum is 49 slots for adults and 42 slots for students and kids. In the former building of the engine construction plant of the Gdańsk shipyard, there is the headquarters of the Maritime Historical Foundation. It houses the unique museum called Szatniowiec, the locker room. The name of the exhibition refers to the building's earliest function. Visiting the exhibition is an amazing journey back in time to the period of the Communist Poland. You can experience there a different reality composed of over 60,000 exhibits and objects from a bygone era. For some visitors it will evoke memories of their childhood and the younger ones will have a chance to discover the world of their parents and grandparents. This is one of those exhibitions that magically bring memories back. The museum is made up of a variety of objects linked to the shipyard industry activities. After all, the exhibition was founded in Gdańsk on the former site of the shipyard and was created by people, some of whom were former shipyard workers. Many of the exhibits refer to the everyday life under communist regime. There are also some artifacts concerning important political events of the time. You can visit the Szatniowiec exhibition on your own or with a guide. The president of the Maritime Historical Foundation, co-creator of the exhibition, Mr. Jarosław Żurawiński, guides you through the museum. His passion, knowledge and experience as a former shipyard worker makes the visit complete. The Maritime Historical Foundation also organizes fantastic guided tours on the former shipyard area. The admission to the museum is free. The link to the Foundation's website can be found in the description of this video below. The Gdańsk Gallery of Senses is a place created by people with visual impairments. They are the founders and managers of this place. They form an organization working for the education and integration of people with disabilities. The visit consists of two parts. First, you walk in the dark. You move through rooms with obstacles, surprises and other attractions. The dark is complete, you cannot see anything. You are dependent on your other senses and your guide who is always a blind person. The experience is strong. It allows you to see the same world but from a different perspective, that one of a person with visual impairments. After completing the walk in the dark, there are the workshops. It's an opportunity for a frank conversation with people working on site. You can ask practically anything to break taboos, dispel stereotypes and get to know and understand each other better. You can learn what's behind the Braille alphabet and discover interesting gadgets that make the everyday life of blind people easier. The museum regularly organizes art exhibitions that promote openness to diversity. All the works on display are adapted to be read by the visually impaired. The Gdańsk Gallery of Senses actively participates in many cyclical events such as the Long Night of Museums, Halloween and Valentine's Day. The Museum in the Dark can be visited in organized groups or individually. Specially adapted dogs help the youngest visitors get used to the museum's atmosphere. 
The admission to the museum is 38 zlotys for adults and 35 zlotys for students and kids. The next place I decided to present in this video is a historic lighthouse in the Nowy Port district. It is located right next to the Harbour Master Office building. It was created in 1894, so it's more than 130 years old and was the first lighthouse on the Baltic Sea to use electric light. Today it is the only privately owned lighthouse in Poland. This lighthouse was saved from destruction by an engineer and sailor, Mr. Jacek Michalak. He became its owner, renovated it, launched the timebell mechanism and made it available to visitors. The lighthouse is over 30 meters high. Going upstairs, we can see an exhibition of lighthouses, photographs and description of the most beautiful lighthouses of the world and very well preserved historical optical devices. There is also interesting information about the functioning of the time ball mechanism and the German attack on the Westerplatte Peninsula. It was with a shot from the window of this lighthouse on 1st September 1939 that the Germans gave the signal to start shelling Westerplatte. At the top of the lighthouse there is the time ball. The rise and fall of the ball every midday allowed ship's captains to accurately set their marine chronometers. In the past, mechanisms of this type were widely used throughout the world. Today, only a few remain. The Gdańsk time ball is one of them. The 30-meter-high lighthouse is also an excellent vantage point from which there is a view of the Vesselplatte Peninsula, the port area, the old Vistula estuary, the Bay of Gdańsk up to Gdynia and Hel Peninsula. The admission to the museum is 10 zlotys for adults and 8 zlotys for students and kids. This was a presentation of 10 places in Gdańsk and Gdynia, maybe not so famous, but absolutely worth a visit. I have included the direct links to these places in the video description below. If you visit any of these places, please share your opinion, leave a comment. If you want more practical videos with useful information, please subscribe to this channel. All my videos, I make them in three languages, in Polish, in French and in English. Thank you for watching and see you soon.